All right, I'll take a second to talk about some templates. Um, so I use drawings that I've made before as templates. Um, over time, they slowly change. Um, some of them don't. So like the basic profile of a neck on a violin, I know it's hard to see in plexiglass, there you go. Uh, but a basic neck is not gonna change. Uh, this dimension, this angle, this height, the peg box depth, all these are kind of standardized measurements. So there's no sense in me redrawing every time. Now, if I do a sculpture, kind of like carving or anything else up here, then yes, obviously I'll change it. Uh, but for the most part, I like to use these templates that I've made over the years uh, to keep everything the same. The two major templates you'll see me here use in a second, I have to find a place for the neck out of this mountain ash. Now, I'm super excited about this neck because of, you can see all this curl that's gonna be in there. It's gonna look fantastic. That curl goes mostly through the block, but it tapers and slightly diminishes down near the bottom. So I'd like to keep the neck up as high as I can. But I have this burl right here that goes to the other side middle right here. I don't want that in my neck. Uh, it's gonna be in the scroll possibly, so I don't want that because I want it to look nice and clean. So what I need to do is I actually need to get this scroll slightly below that knot uh, in the neck block here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slice off the, the top edge here um, get past some of that burl and then trace out my template and then I can bandsaw uh, the actual exterior shape of this and let that finish dry. I want a solid straight edge on top. That's very important. Um, I may leave myself a little extra to mill off to make sure it's dead flat uh, after it's done completely drying. So that's the neck template. We'll be using that in just a little bit. Um, the other main template you'll see me use is this fella, and this one is for the mold. This is for the piece that goes inside the violin. And when we talk about molds, you will see there is a, a little, this thin piece of plywood that's gonna go inside that will accept the curve of the ribs. You will glue the blocking to it on the, uh, the bouts, the upper and lower, uh, and on the corners. And so, um, I need to get this to the final shape that I want. Now, some people do these in multiple parts so they can collapse. Some people make unusual shaped ones that pop out real easily. Um, this is the way that I was taught and I actually really like it this way. I'm gonna make a mold out of this so that I can pop it in and out of the rib structure when needed to support it. Um, it'll be about half a millimeter smaller than this final dimension. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna trace this on a piece of plywood um, and you'll see me kind of cut this out on a bandsaw and I'll refine it with some hand tools to make sure it's where I want it. And then I will attach my corner blockings to it uh, before wrapping our ribs around it. It'll all make sense uh, if you haven't seen this before. Um, it maybe sounds more complicated than it is, but I'm gonna go ahead and trace this out um, and then we'll, we'll get started cutting on these uh, two items, the neck block and the mold.
right, so let's take a second here and talk about our mold and the pieces that you see here. I've just ripped um, this piece of cedar, milled it up, turned it into uh, a lot of these little blocks. Now these little blocks are for the mold and they become permanent and temporary. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna temporarily glue them into this mold. They will become permanent to the side and the rib structure of the instrument. Uh, let me get this out of the way and I can show you here. So on our mold, we'll have a bottom, which I still need to fit, so this will wedge right in there and glue into the bottom. And the bottom uh, ribs will glue to that block. I'll eventually shape that block and then trim off the excess weight on the inside. The same will be done for the top here and all four corners of this. Oops. They go like this all the way around. Now, the interesting thing about all of these pieces is there are different sizes for almost each piece and not in just one direction. So a lot of people don't realize uh, that a violin actually tapers. It does not, uh, it's not even all the way around the ribs and its thickness. So it tapers quite a bit, uh, it's subtle, but it tapers about two and a half millimeters from the back to the top, right, the bottom to the top. And so at our top right now, I have it slightly oversized at 31 millimeters tall, it's 52 wide. Um, I don't know what that is in inches. When I do instrument work, it's all in metric. Um, and the sides, these are 32 and a quarter for the bottom bounce, these, those, these bottom corners, and it's uh, about 31.75, um, a little over 31 and a half for the top side. So it starts that curve already, and so what I'll do is I'll glue these in, I will then shape them to the outside of the mold, and then um, we'll actually start gluing our ribs to everything. And our ribs don't get glued to the mold, they only get glued to these blocks. Once it's glued to the blocks and the lining is in, this mold will pop out. So that's what a lot of these shapes are for uh, that you see here. Some people route out shapes, some people do whatever. Um, I like the bigger shapes because it gives me more opportunity for clamping. And so you will see that there are some flat spots in this rib structure, or the clamp mold, so that when this block goes here, I can clamp it directly there, right? And the same thing for the bottom, and the same thing for the top. Um, but it also serves another function, is that this has to come out. If it doesn't come out easily or stresses me out too much, I can literally make just a couple of short cuts and the mold comes out in pieces. Which is not ideal, but it is a one-use mold uh, for me, oftentimes. Uh, I don't make a lot of the same instruments twice. So I won't be reusing this, most likely. Um, so if it gets cut in half, so be it. If it ends up coming out uh, in one piece, maybe we'll paint it and send it off to Marcel or something. So anyhow, um, I'm gonna get busy cleaning these up to fit and you'll watch me uh, kind of glue them in.
blocks are all solid and glued up. The next step is I'm gonna trace my template for my corners and my top and bottom on here. Also gonna mark my center line, which becomes critical over time uh, as you construct everything. Now, this cedar is quite squirrely, and I think it's beautiful the way that, it, that it's been made uh, or grown, but the issue that I'm running into is oftentimes when I make these traditionally, you'll use a chisel, you'll cut the waste off and then chisel it and it'll split square because you're using straight grain stuff like willow or I use buckeye a lot uh, for this process. But in this case, I'm actually just gonna band saw that off and then finish file it to shape. Um, and that way I don't have to worry about the grain orientation on these as much. Um, and this is a special violin, so that's what we're gonna do. So I'm just gonna trace these real quick. Make sure I have it lined up where it's supposed to be. Mark my center lines. Trace everything else. Okay. Oh, so I also I put my center lines on. I forgot to trace the top. That's not a big deal. Okay. Just like so. Yep. We're good. So that template's now done. That's the sole purpose of this one right here. Um, now that I have my shapes here, I'm gonna go ahead and just band saw those off and file them square. So we've got this mold all smooth and transitioned and filed up. Um, so I've got it cut down to my lines and I'm feeling a lot more than looking for any of these kind of smooth transition points that I need. So once we've got this done, we're gonna tape it up. So I'm gonna put little pieces of tape right here to keep the glue from sticking where I want it to. And that way when I glue the ribs on to these rib structure pieces, these blocks, it won't stick to the mold. That's the hope. That's what we hope for. So otherwise, sometimes it has to crack it out. Um, so we'll tape this up and get it ready for bending our ribs. <laughs> 